I really like silence. Did you hear that silence right there before I started talking? You're like, oh, silence. <laughs> but you do like to talk a little too. So yeah. <laughs> we've created such a world, you know, the two of us, you know, it, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just wild. Who would have none? You know, who would have thunk? Yeah. It's like the ambiance of it, in a way, right? Yeah, we just, you know, it's, it's great to live in it, you know? It's great to live in it. In the 60s, I lived in New York, and, and then at some point we bought this farm, the one that burned down. The old house had a pitcher pump. It froze every night, but it was, I walked out on the snow, and I thought that was really neat, you know? Um, it was beautiful here. And so, we tried a winter, and then, I don't know, then, then you know, the real estate in New York got kind of crazy. So it wasn't like I could just go back there, you know. We had a loft for 65, and then one for 140, and probably it's a thousand bucks a minute now, right? But I don't know, I feel like I'm, I'm more of a Mainer than a New Yorker now. You know, for a long time, it's, I, you know, we, we'd go to the art school, there'd be these lectures for all these New York art, art types. And um, I pretty much got it all, you know. And then at some point, I didn't get it and I didn't care, right, you know. So um, that seemed like it was nice for me to move at my own pace. Right? I remember like being, thinking in New York, you know, I don't care what anybody thinks, you know, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And then coming up here and say, nobody thinks one way or another about what you're doing, you're really on your own here, woman. And that's probably, you know, that's probably good too. Um, at some point, I, you know, said, here's a guy that's making some really wild art, you know, so I was kind of interested in knowing more. How do I describe him? A royal pain in the ass? Now what? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know. He's a wild guy. I don't know how to describe him. How would you describe me? Oh, you're, you're ever present. <laughs> Never leave How's you alone. <laughs> Not knowing what's going to happen next is one of the, I think we both work that way, you know, just sort of not starting out with intentions. You know, I think intentions kind of seem sort of, uh, sort of trite compared to what happens when, you don't, when you're not intending, you know. Kind of like when you put the top on this cane, right? You know, you just said, this will really be good, right? You know, mm -hmm. this will fit good, right? So that it's just, you see two things that go together good, I think. Yeah, it's, it's good for uh, fending off warlocks. He's, he's got a grandson, this kid, and he'd come, he's a rearranger, this kid. So he'd come into the house and he'd pick up everything and put it somewhere else, put it somewhere else. <laughs> and I thought, it's a family trait, you know. <laughs> I'm really into idolatry. And that's, your shrine is like a little house your idol, basically, and uh, I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of that religious art. I was raised Catholic, and I was like, oh, get me away from that. You know what I mean? And then it just took, took over. by these idols and stuff. I thought it gave them like a spiritual patina. And then they're in the thrift store or in the yard sale. So I get them and they have a great new life, Lisa and life. You reanimate them almost, right? Yeah.
anything can influence my work. It's just, you're bombarded with things all the time now. All our brains are chattering away, right? I realize that this is where I turn it off. You know, when I'm painting, I'm just not, I'm thinking about the next mark, but I'm not thinking about, I don't know, the med mental chatter. Sometimes I'm on this back porch, and it's just sort of a back street, right? And so I was watching people going down the street with their, like Fanny says, with their phones or whatever, just walking down the street. And it seems like they were where they'd been or where they're going, but they weren't where they were, you know? And, and that seemed to me like um, too bad, <laughs> you know? So the mental chatter is where you've been and where you're going rather than where you are. When you're empty, you're ready for anything. You know, you can just keep learning stuff and piling on this learning. But I think when you're empty, I think that's a good position to be. Right. Where you're just uh, ready to be filled up in a way. Right? I don't know if that makes any Back sense. Back in the 60s right? when people were all into the Satori and, and Zen stuff, mm -hmm. that was the thing, the no mind, you know, they, they just... Mm. One day I was sort of walking around the street and I walked onto this theater marquee and it was a nice kind of like fog and I thought there was a moment when I was, I attained it, but it went away. Mm. It's not a permanent thing, I decided. <laughs> Wisdom. <laughs> Before I had a computer or anything like that, people were telling me, you should do it, it can do this, it can do that, it can do, it can do all these great things. And I kept saying, show me a computer that can make mud pies. You know, they can just deal with physical stuff, you know. And I think, in retrospect, with rust and with everything I do, I, I like stuff. When I was a kid, I remember, like, going and looking into a barrel of, you know, some blue p pigment and just thinking, oh, God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so mm -hmm. so I, I, I've always loved that c pure color, you know. When, when I was rusting all that stuff, I, I said, now I'm going to rust this and now I'm going to rust that. And I might be done with it now. I'm not sure. Maybe time to get back to paint color, you know. So, we'll see. You can't really control the rust. You put it down and then it changes with the atmosphere. So, you have to have kind of a thing where you let go, I guess, of it. And let it uh, oxidize however it's going to, right? Yeah, and then, and then it keeps changing a little bit too. Like I yeah. was saying, that, that one with a, with a Drew in the profile, mm -hmm. with paint, right? Um, I drew it in once and I saw it and, and I showed it to this, I was gonna show it to this lady that was visiting and it was gone. So I said, okay, I'm gonna find those lines and I re redrew them. Then, I, then it came out the other day and it looked like it was sort of gone again. So I found the lines and painted them in real strong now. No, it's not meant to be. Well, it, it is, it is too. It's real gone. It's real gone. Isn't that like a beatneck uh, thing? Yeah, yeah. man, man like it's real gone. <laughs> That's gone. I got this card and it said, you know, there, there was this artist union meeting. I so I went down to a meeting, and you know, I met Carlo and I met Natasha and Kathy Bradford was part of that crew too, and uh, Stephen Petrov and all these people that I still love dearly, right? And I was just here working, like, and, and no, for a while no one was interested, right? And then I think that maybe this show in was Cassett a couple of years ago, so sometimes no one's looking and sometimes people are looking. That's about the size of it. And you sort of get, after a while, you get to know that the sort of waves of it. In New York, I had shows and, you know, I'd get reviewed for a while and shit like that, you know, but I don't know. Some go, you know, it doesn't, doesn't mean that much to me. Like I said, if I get a swollen head, I'm a lousy painter, right? I think the art market sort of poisons a lot of stuff, really. Although, you know, how else are you going to make a living? But I still think it poisons a lot of stuff.
you know, and, and the idea that choosing like say of the people that were in that union, right? You know, Kathy Bradford's now big hot shit, right? You know, and, and she's great. She's a wonderful painter, and I love a wonderful lady. But, but, and somebody else isn't, you know. But, but to me, they were they were equals in my head, you know. And um. So. So the, the the art market kind of dictates that a little bit too much. So all that stuff kind of like a, annoys me, but it's it is what it is, you know. And and I, I I like to get enough money to get some hearing aids, you know, whatever. I, I was I had a little teaching job at College of the Atlantic, and they were having a philosophical question about, you know, if a tree's beautiful, no one sees it, is it still beautiful? You know, and um, I said, oh, what a waste of time. <laughs> you can make your own adventure, make your own style, and make your own world. You don't have to, you don't have to latch onto anybody else's. You know. Yeah. Getting to do a kind of project that you really want to is worth like anything. Yep. You know, and uh, I don't know. I've been super lucky in what I've been able to do. And it doesn't even seem like I have a plan, really. But. <sighs> yeah, that's the getting to do it. You know, like, I agree with that, you know, just, you know, they gave me some award last year for painting for so many years, whatever the fuck it was, but, you know, and, you know, and they were very nice to me, and I like them all, and, I, you know, I love them all, but, 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 you know, but you just do it, you know, you just get up in the morning and do it.